You know, when we were, um, you know, even as we were singing the song of God taking us higher and sharing, sharing, you know, one of the things as I was preparing, you know, Sharon and I, we, we don't talk about Sundays much. You know, when she's speaking, I just let her, let the Lord speak to her. And then I'm just like all of you. When I come to church, I, I find out what the Lord has put on her heart in the same way. <laughs> Um, you know, I don't really share unless she asks uh, about what um, about what the Lord is speaking to, to me about. And so, but it was very interesting um, these last couple of days. I have literally been getting this image of um, you know the world and you know everything that's going on. I don't know what's happening with every individual but there's a lot stirring in the world would you agree yes. there's a lot going on there's a lot going on politically there's a lot going on you know among the nations of the earth there's a lot of news that we are watching um, you know of tragedy of violence and there's so much turbulence that is on the earth and, and literally what I what I saw as I was praying um, about this weekend was was I, I saw in the midst of everything that was happening the chaos that God was taking a remnant of people higher and that he was he was literally bringing us above the fray giving us a new point of view it's almost God wants to elevate us into a place where we will see things with a perspective you know, I think it's so easy for us to get lost or even to be involved in some of the things, in some of the conflict, in some of the, you know, injustices that we see. And, and sometimes when we begin to get involved at a face-to-face -face level without going higher and seeing God's perspective on things, sometimes we can get lost in the fight. You guys know what I'm saying? It's very easy for us to get lost in the fight. You know, one of the things that... We're following very closely to right now is uh, what's happening in Hong Kong, um, you know, because that's uh, that's our birth land. You know, Sharon and I were both born there. Um, Sharon came from Hong Kong when she was eight. I came from Hong Kong when I was two. But her dad, her fa her you know, her dad's side of the family is still over there, and um, you know, she woke up this morning. Um, just with Hong Kong in her spirit, she was praying for Hong Kong, and then we we looked at the news, and sure enough. Um, yesterday, they had a massive protest in Hong Kong, and um, and there was there was a lot of stuff. You know, the police and came out in riot gear. They were they were spraying water. They were doing tear gas, and and we're just kind of looking at what's happening. Um, for those of you that don't know um, the situation over there, um, Hong Kong was officially. Um, turned over. It was a it was a British colony for many many years, and then it was turned over in 1997 um, back to China. And China promised that over 50 years that they would slowly assimilate Hong Kong back into uh, mainland China. But right now, because Hong Kong used to be a it's a democracy, you know, there's freedom, there's free trade, there's uh, in fact it is really really the center of commerce in Asia. It's one of the biggest cities, you know, it's kind of like the New York of, of, um, of the United States of America. And so what is happening is, is slowly, um, they are beginning to see some of their freedoms um, invaded upon it. And, and over the last three, four months, the people of Hong Kong have risen up and says, hey, we want to remain free. We want to remain autonomous. We don't want to come under, you know, some of the rules and regulations and, you know, because all of you know that um, China is a closed nation, is a communist nation. And so there is a huge um, protest that we heard last weekend about 1.7 million people uh, went on the streets of Hong Kong to protest and to really stand and to, and to just, just say, we want to be free. We want to remain Hong Kong. We want to remain a democracy. And so there, it's, it's a huge thing that is going on. And, and you know, as we're watching this, we're praying. We're praying for the people of Hong Kong. We're praying that, you know, God would intervene. But we know that these kind of things are going to begin to to become more and more prevalent. In fact, we're going to be, begin to see... Um, nation turn against nation. How many of you guys are following 
Uh, what's happening, even with like the, 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 the tariffs war, the tax war that's happening. Anyone of you guys following the news? Three or four of you, five of you, okay. It's gonna soon affect how much you pay for stuff. <laughs> so um, I, I wanna encourage you guys to, to follow what is happening. But, but what is going on? This is, this is birth pangs. I think this is what the Bible says, that there is gonna be a time when there is going to be more and more unrest that is, going to, that is going to begin to take place. We're going to begin to see nations in conflict with nations. We're going to see peoples in conflict with people. We're going to see the you know, love for one another start to grow cold. And, and, and I believe what we're going to see all across the nations of the earth, I'm not, I'm not for it. I'm not hoping for it. We're not like speaking it forth, but it is the Bible. The Bible tells us this is what is going to happen, is that there is going to be increase of these things, and it is going to be like a birth pang, knowing that the return of the Lord and the kingdom of the Lord being established on the earth is coming closer. And as we realize this, as we know that these, these conflicts, these, you know, these clashes are going to take place, it is imperative that the people of God go higher, that the people of God have the perspective of heaven. It is important that we know what's going on, that we don't join in the chaos, but that we become beacons of light and truth and peace. Everybody say peace. Peace. This is the, this is the one thing. I, you know, we, we've been saying it for, for, for some time now, that as the... As the, the things on earth begin to shake as we are beginning to see that the greatest testimony that the church is going to have is through the peace that they carry. It's really when, when, when everyone's like, you know, in fear or what's going on or we're going to have war. Um, you know, what's going to happen, you know, to the elections in 2020 as we're all, you know, as all we're, we're dialoguing and talking about this. There's going to be a people that are going to be walking in the peace of God. They're not going to be shaken. They're not going to be fearful. They're not going to be like, oh, man, I can't. I don't know what's going to happen. But they're going to people are going to see the peace of God resting on his people. And there is going to be so many opportunities for us as believers to share and to testify about who God is because people are going to be asking, why, why aren't you, you know, why aren't you nervous? You know, why aren't you like angry? Why aren't you, you know, uh, fearful about this? It's because the peace of God is resting on us. And I just want to, this is something that um, the Lord has really put on my heart, um, you know, even for this morning is to talk about what does this look like? You know, how do we really walk in peace in these times? And, you know, because if we're going to be the people of peace, if we're going to be the ones that, that, you know, that demonstrate this in our lives, well, it's got to start with us. It's got to start internally. It's got to start with our lives, right? Like, we've got to walk in this peace. We've got to live, you know, knowing who God is, how he leads us, and then because we're walking in this peace, then we can begin to demonstrate it, then we can begin to tell the world about it, and then we can begin to, you know, be instruments of God, um, you know, in, in, this, in this time and space that we're walking into. So if you have your Bibles today, or your phones, if you could turn to Psalm 23. Yeah. You know, I've been, I've been preaching for, you know, ever since 1996. How many years is that now? 22 years, 22, 23 years, 23 years. Almost every single weekend for 23 years. And I realized I have never preached out of Psalm 23 before. I don't think I've ever given a message on Psalm 23 until today. You know, and I, I believe... 23 years. Yeah, that's right, 23 years. And I believe it's time, you know, that um, there, is, there is something on the heart of God that He wants to release to us. 
Um, you know, this is probably the most well-known chapter of Scripture. Um, so I'm going to... The answer is reciting it. That's good. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this chapter. And I just want us to... to as, we, as we read this together, I just want us to capture the heart behind how the Lord wants to be our shepherd, how he wants to be our guide. Psalm 23, 1. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And I just want to stop there. Uh, you know, the, the Bible, I believe this is how God has intended every single one of his children to live. It's out of this place of knowing that God is our shepherd. And, and, and I just just read, read along. What, is, what does the Lord do? Verse 2, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. And, and kind of the, the image that, that we get, how many of you guys have ever, um, you know, stood at a seashore that was, you know, when, when, the, when the ocean was just quiet, you know, and just slowly trickling in? Onto the sand and then back out. How many of you guys have? How many of you guys have ever witnessed that? Isn't that one of the most peaceful yeah. images? You know, I'm not a water guy. I don't go to the beach much, but I do enjoy it. You know, when, when I go at night and and you know when I'm around an ocean and I just see the you know the the, the wave just slowly um, going back and forth and just enjoying creation. I remember when I was a uh, a little kid when we first moved to LA um, there's a park in Marina del Rey that my parents used to take us to all the time and at the top of the park was a hill and my brother and I you know we just sit on top of that hill and then after a while we would just roll down that hill like little kids you know six seven years old and this is you know what God is is the picture that he is painting here in Psalm 23 is that this is how I have created all of you to live and to function, is to walk in, that, in, the, in the sense of peace that I have given to my children. I want you to, it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, sometimes when we, sometimes how our peace lifts is when we begin to have a plan. And when we begin to go after something, and when we begin to put pressure on ourselves to, uh, to accomplish something, to go somewhere, to do something that, um, that may not be in the perfect timing of the Lord. Can I say that again? Yeah. Sometimes our peace lifts when we begin to pursue things in our lives that may not be in the perfect timing of the Lord. You know, as a, as a pastor, we've counseled many people. And, um, and, you know, there's sometimes people will come into our office and they will say, you know, hey, Pastor Sharon, Pastor Jonathan, can you pray for me? Um, I, I, I think I really know what I'm going to do with my life. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to become, you know, a businessman. I, you know, I'm going to go through school. At 26, I'm going to go to grad school and, and finish. At, you know, at 30, I'm going to start my own business. And then, you know, at 31, I'm going to get married. And then, you know, they have a whole thing that they're all, everything's all lined up. And they're like, this is, and then they'll say, can you pray for me? And then I'll look at them. And, you know, this is when, this is when I start getting worried. You know? <laughs> I'm like, man, when we have something locked in so well in our mind of what we want, how we want to do it, sometimes God interrupts our plans. How many of you guys have ever had that happen to you? How many of you guys have enjoyed it? Oh, some of you enjoyed it? Oh, man, that's good. <laughs> but it's hard, right? When we have a plan, when we're like, okay, this is where we're going, and this is what I want, 
and and you know there's a lot of pressure that comes onto us that we you know we need to accomplish we have a timeline of where we need to be at certain times you know some of us have come over here to hollywood and say hey i need to you know within a year you know i need to get onto this you know show and be this far in, along in my career and we put pressure on ourselves and we work and we strive and we lose our peace and, the, and, and here the, it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And in fact, whenever we come into this place of, of, of striving and wanting something, we lose our peace. And the Lord says, hey, come on back to the green pastures. Yes, sir. Hey, come on by to the beach and, and let me show you the stillness of quiet waters. And this is how God has has called us to live is to be in this place. We don't ever want to. We don't want to ever outrun the peace of God. I want. I want to say this. We are called as the church to walk in the peace of God, and really in the peace of God there is the greatest expansion. But when we try to walk before God, and we want to walk, uh, you know, on our own timetable, and we put pressure on ourselves to get somewhere, or to do something, or to be somebody, we lose our peace, and then our acceleration kind of shuts down. God is always about having us step in step with Him and to continue in this peace. You know, this is how the Garden of Eden started. You know, the Bible tells us in the Garden of Eden there was perfect tranquility. Adam and Eve, you know, were, you know, were created. They had dominion over all the fish of the sea, all the animals, you know, of the land. They named them. They had dominion. There was peace. And out of peace, there was authority. There was dominion. There was, you look at, you look at how God works. God always moves out of the place of peace. And what is the opposite of peace? It's striving. God always wants us to sit in this place of peace and to wait for Him. Because when we are in this place of peace, then God is, this person is ready for promotion. This person is ready to, you know, spread their wings and to go further. The God, He's ready for this door to open. Look, look what happens. Verse 4. It's a, or, or verse 3. It says, He guides me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And then it says this, he says, and even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What is happening here? David is, David is saying that even though, you know, probably the, the best translation of this valley of the shadow of death is a dark valley. How many of you guys have ever been through something dark? Have every, everyone, anybody, anybody gone through hard things? How many of you guys have gone through something hard in the last three months? Well, well, walks into the sin of these so clubs. here it is. It old. says that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even in the hardest of times, David says, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff you know what a rod does? A rod staves off wild animals, people that will attack you, people that will really, you know, come after you and try to hurt you. God has a rod, and when he leads us, he carries a rod. That's what, that's what David's saying here. He says, whenever there's people that have come up against us, he's going he's gonna to stave them off. How many of you guys believe he can do that? And then, and then he says, and then there's your staff. They comfort me. You know what a staff does? It leads, and it directs, and it tells sheep where they're supposed to go and where they're not supposed to go. And I just want to I just want to say this. I says when we are when we are living in peace, we are living in perfect trust in our savior. How many of you I'm just going to ask this question. Do we trust the Lord? Yeah. When we're going through the darkest times, the hardest times, the things that we don't understand, do we trust the Lord? Do we believe that He is our protector? Do we believe that He is still the one that is directing us? 
Do you, we believe that he is still the one that is involved in our everyday? This is what gives us peace, you know, sons and daughters. This is what, when we know beyond the know that no matter what we're going through, that God is in it, that God has a plan, and we don't have to be worried. We don't have to be stressed. We don't have to strive. We just have to be sons before the Lord. We just have to be before the Lord. You know, as a, as a, as a father, and I'm, I'm not just talking about my kids, I'm just talking about in general. How many, how many fathers and mothers do we have here? Have kids? Okay. Oh, yeah, there's <laughs> You probably haven't experienced this yet, but you will. <laughs> but how many of you guys, as, you know, as parents, would like your kids coming up to you every day and, Hey, Mom, are you going to feed me today? Are you sure you have food for me? You sure about that? I'm going to have food. What about tomorrow morning? Am I going to get breakfast? Are you sure you're going to feed me? Um, it, hey, are you going to drive me to school or am I going to have to walk? Are you sure? I don't believe you. I don't think you're going to drive me to school. I think you're going to make me walk. You know, and how many of you guys would like somebody like questioning your provision and your goodness. And, and you know, how many of you guys would like that? Nobody, right? I don't think, I don't think anyone, but sometimes this is how we are. So we don't realize it, but sometimes as children, uh, you know, as sheep, we're like come to the Father and say, hey Lord, why is this happening? Why, you know, why did this happen in my life? Are you still good? Are you still here? Are you still leading me? And, and here, David has a revelation. He says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your protection, your staff, your direction, they comfort me. And then here it goes, verse 5. And then it says, Do you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And you have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. I want you to think about this for a moment. You know, you know, we all talk through about going through hard times and going through these valleys. You know, one of the most stressful things that we can do is verse five is when God brings you into a place where your enemies are in your company. How many of you guys have ever felt, have been in a place like that? A few of you, right? Does it feel good? It's a little nerve-wracking, right? It's, and, and David here, he says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of enemies, of my enemies, and you have anointed my head with oil, and my cup overflows. You just see, like David in the midst of these crazy situations that he faced and how many of you guys know he faced a lot of crazy situations oh, yeah. can you guys imagine um how many of you guys how many of you guys have had anybody that you know didn't like you like really didn't like you and was made possibly wanting to do some harm to you and um and it kind of stressed you out you know when when you're at home and, and thinking about the situation. How many of you guys ever had that happen to you? Okay, most, most of us, right? How many of you guys can imagine that that person that was really unhappy with you was the king of a nation? And not only was he the king of a nation that was trying to kill you, he wasn't, he wasn't just trying to like, you know, do something bad and hope you fail or something. He was actually wanting to kill you and not only did he want to kill you, but he had a whole army of people that were looking for you to kill you. How, how, how do you think that feels? And, and what, what I believe David carried, you know, in the midst of all of this, was that David knew he was in these situations. He was pursued. He was, you know, people wanted to take his life. The king wanted to, you know, didn't want him to take his throne. And in the midst of this, David came before the Lord and he says, even though you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, you have anointed my head with oil and my cup overflows. Even in the midst of all these things that are happening surrounding me, like I am, I, I am surrounded by you. Your presence is here with me. 
I am not moved. I am not shaken. I am not scared. I know that you surround me. I walk in peace in the midst of all of the strife that is encircling me. This is King David. I believe this is why God promoted him. God saw his life. And he says, this young man is ready for a promotion. This young man knows what it means to rest in me. This young man knows that, you know, when the world is, is swirling around, that he can trust in me and, and be in me and to, and to not fear anything. And I want to... I just want to bring this back, you know, into our situation, into our life. I want to say it again that our peace, the peace that we live with in our hearts, knowing that God is good, knowing that he is our leader, knowing that he is our protector and, and not being shaken by anything that else that happens in this world. When we walk in this peace, yes. it is the greatest, one of the greatest commodities that God has given to us in this life. God walk in the dead. Maybe some of us today, we're going through some things. And we're, you know, and, and, and it's been hard. Like we're looking at our future and we're like, you know, we don't know where we're going and we've been praying and we've been asking the Lord. And I just want to encourage you that the greatest place of, the greatest place to be is in the, in the presence of the Lord. The greatest place is to be waiting on God, trusting the Lord. Look what it says here in verse 6. It says, surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, David was a man that God said, he is a man that is after my own heart. And we know that David loved to worship and David... Um, you know, he, he loved God and he served God. But I, I can't help but believe that, that God said this about David because David not only was, was a worshiper, he was not only a surrendered heart, but he was a man that lived in this place of peace through every storm. Like he would not be moved because he knew who God is. And maybe some of us today, like we're like, we don't know where God is, you know, in this situation. We don't know if God's going to come through for us, you know, in our future. And we need, you know, we need to have this job or we need to have this thing. We need to have this relationship. Like I want to get married and, and whatever. And sometimes when we come into a place where we're, where we have our own agenda, and we're like, oh, and we're getting stressed out by, by the pressures that are around us. What God wants to say is, I just want you to come, son. I just want you to come, daughter. And I just want you to be. I just want you to rest. I want you to just come into this place and know that I am in complete control. And that's why David, I, I believe in verse 6, is how it all closes. It says, it says, surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. How many of you guys know that when you're in the place of the presence of the Lord, you find peace? Yes. You know, for these last 14, 13, 14 years, ever since God brought us into the, the house of prayer movement, we have probably spent thousands, maybe seven, 8,000 hours in the, in the presence of the Lord. And how many of you guys know these last 13, 14 years have probably been the most turbulent of our lives? We have ex experienced some hardships. We've experienced some financial stuff. We've experienced some relational chaos. We've experienced times when we didn't know where we were going you know, from one place to another. We didn't know how we we're going to make ends meet. A lot of different things. But it, it's really, if we didn't come into this place, 
of learning to dwell in the house of the Lord, to dwell in the presence of God, to find His peace, to, gain, to go higher and to gain His perspective on what was going on and all these different things. What is God trying to do? What is God trying to teach me? And, and, and sitting in this place of rest and peace, I don't know where we'd be today. I, I really don't. And I believe there, is, there are some storms coming. There are some you know, hard times coming among the nations. And there are some things that we are going to go through as individuals. And the Lord wants, to, wants us to realize that the greatest place that we can be is in this place of peace. And allowing God to lead us. You know, we, in our lives, I was just, I was just reflecting on this, um, you know, this morning. You know, the, the things that God has done, like when he moved us in 2011 to Hollywood, and then he moved us here in 2013 to, to the Sunset Strip. Like these were not things that we had on our plans when we started you know, doing music here about you know, 2015. Like these were all things that I did not plan out. If I knew that this was where God was gonna bring us eventually, and this was gonna be our calling in Hollywood, I would have studied music in, in, in school. I would have, you know, I would have learned a lot of different things. But you know what? God shifted us from one place to another. And I just want to say something. When God shifted us, there was no fear. There was no like, you know, like, oh my gosh, this is what's happening. But we just, but when God opens the door, we just step in. When God opens another, oh, you want to, you want to go to the Sunset Strip? Uh, you know, the rent's fifteen thousand dollars. Okay, just step right on in. Oh, you want to start music and you have no idea what music is and you've never been in the industry, you don't even listen to music in the industry, step right on in. And then you just step right on in. And, and this is when you're not, what I just imagine, it's like I want to, eventually my life calling is to lead a ministry in Hollywood. Imagine how stressful I would have been, 20, 25, 30 years old, getting ready for Hollywood, getting ready. I never had any stress. But it was just when we walk in peace, God opens a door and you just step right in. That's why I always say, don't be too planned out. Don't be, don't be, don't have your dreams. You know, we want to, we want to have things that we are pursuing in life, but don't get too set on how that's going to happen yeah. or when that's going to happen. Because if we do, we're going to want and we're going to need and we're going to strive and we're going to need. And then all of a sudden we're going to, we're going to, God's like, man, he's not walking in peace. She's not walking in peace. They can't, they can't walk into this another level of influence. You guys all following what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So I just wanna I just wanna challenge us. It starts with us. The world needs you. The world 2020 is gonna be a crazy year. I, I just wanna say it again. The presidential elections, all the stuff, all the movements, all the nations rising against nations, it is gonna be it is gonna be all out chaos at times and we're gonna watch it play out like it's a like it's a soap opera. I really believe it. And people is gonna be moved and there's gonna be anger. And what I believe is gonna happen and what 2020 is is gonna be people in the midst of the chaos being able to rise up higher and having eyes to see with clarity. It's the vision. And and it's really out of this place of being at rest in the Lord. When we're at, I just want to say it again, when we are at rest, God promotes, God expands. This is why David came into this place and he was king at such a young age, is because nothing would shake him. Walking through the valley of the shadow of death did not shake him because he knew God was his guide and his protector being seated at the seat of all of his enemies who were trying to take his life, it did not shake him because he knew that the favor of the Lord was on his life and that he didn't need to kill Saul. He would become king at the right time and he was just at peace. He says, all I want is to dwell in the house of the Lord. I believe this is, it, it's, it's a key moment, like Sharon's saying, like it, we are in a key moment of preparation. And, and our greatest preparation is just being in this place of, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I may not always understand what I go through in life, but I know you're in it. 
And I'm not going to try to figure it out. I'm just going to, I just want to be a child. I just want to hold on to you. I just want to, to, to put all of my independence into full dependence upon you. And I, and I just, I just want to say this. There are going to be great places that God will bring us through that we have not even been looking for, but because we are just being, and we're just resting, and we're just trusting. We bow our heads. I just want us to think about maybe one thing that has been hard for you to grasp. One thing that's been hard for you to trust because you don't fully understand what's happening in your life. I want us to bring this one thing. You know, there it might be many, but I just want us to think about one. Because as we learn to trust the Lord with the hardest things, we'll learn to trust the Lord with everything. What is it? has been robbing your peace. What dark valley? Maybe it's someone rising up in accusation against you. Maybe it's being a standstill in our career. It seems like nothing's happening or going forward. And I just want us to pray and say, Lord, give me peace in this situation. Teach my heart to rest and to trust that you are a shepherd who carries the rod in your in one hand and a staff in the other hand. And it may never work out the way that I thought it was going to work out. But I trust you. sons and your daughters. We are inheritors of peace. And Father, we pray that you would release this into our life right now in a deep way. Father, we pray that this would be the root of our life, the root Lord, that grows out of our relationship with you. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you have given us the strength so that no situation can be too hard. No path too rocky. There is nothing that can rob us of this peace of knowing that you are our Father, that you are good, that you have our best interest in mind all the time, and that we just need to enjoy this place. 
us enjoy our Father. Enjoy His presence. Even enjoy this turbulence in our life. Say, thank you, Lord, that things are so hard and that my heart was so heavy that you're using this to turn my heart fully to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you are bringing me into this place. Let's just give it to the Lord today. And Father, we pray for anyone in here today that has been striving, that has been walking under pressure, that has not been experiencing contentment with whatever we have or whatever circumstances we are in. Father, we pray, Lord, that in these places, Lord, that you would exchange the striving, that you would exchange the thoughts that are running, running around our minds and that you would exchange it for your peace, Lord. Father, we receive your peace today. Father, we want to operate out of peace. We want to walk out your plans for our life out of this place of peace. We want to be financially thriving out of this place of being at peace in you. Father, release peace over this room. Father, release peace for those of us that are going out on, on journeys of faith. Release peace for those of us, Lord, that, have, that are carrying dreams in our hearts, God. We just pray that you would release us to walk in your peace, God. That in your peace is the perfect timing and in your peace is the perfect way. Father, we, we thank you, Lord, for those that are rising up with causes in our hearts. Father, we pray, Lord, that you would fill us with your peace, God. That we would not be driven by what we are to do. But, Father, we, we pray, Lord, that we would be at peace knowing that you are going to open the doors in the right time right. and that we are going to partner with you God and, and we are just going to be there, there's not going to be a bone in our body that's going to be like just trying to move on our own strength but we're just going to be moving out of this place of peace and we pray that out of this place of peace there is going to be confidence and out of this place of peace, there is going to be authority. And out of this place of peace, there is going to be advancement. So Holy Spirit, we just pray. Can we just stretch out our hands to the Lord today? I just feel like we need, we really need this. We really need the Lord. Father, we give you our future. We give you our uncertainties. We give you our worries. We lay it at your feet right now. God, and in exchange, we receive your peace. We receive the peace of heaven. Father, that same peace that is resting around your throne where the seraphim and the cherubim are just cruising and, and flying effortlessly around that space where the saints and the angels are effortlessly bowing their face before you in worship with such ease, God, as a response of who you are. Father, we pray, Lord, that that same peace that is in heaven, Lord, that it will rest upon us, Lord. We pray for the release of supernatural peace. 
The same peace that David carried day after day when he knew thousands were after his life. And he would just go, even though I, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Even though you bring me in the presence of my enemies, you still favor me. And you anoint me. I don't have anything to prove. But when I walk in your peace, everything shifts around me. So Father, we pray for supernatural peace. Father, for those that are struggling financially, we pray supernatural peace. Those that have a difficult week ahead, we pray supernatural peace. Those that have big decisions to make, we pray for supernatural peace and for the clearest, wisest choices to come out of this place. So Father, fill us. Let it overflow in us. Give you permission to fill us up right now. God, we just we just say, come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. And God, we just say, Lord, we can't do anything apart from you. We have nothing apart from you. God, we need your Holy Spirit. God, we ask for the filling of your spirit upon our hearts. God, we ask that you would fill us up even right now, God. Just fill us up. Just receive the measure of his spirit just coming upon this upon your hearts right now. Just receive it. Just receive. The Holy Spirit, just receive it. We just receive an infilling. We need the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled. It is continual. It's not just one time last month, one time, six months ago. It's continually be filled with the Holy Spirit. So God, we just ask right now, fill us up. Fill us up. Just take a drink. Take a drink. God, we ask, Holy Spirit, just have your way. Open up your heart right now. Say, God, I just want more. I want more of your spirit. I want the outpour of your spirit, God, that would give me peace in the midst of every dark circumstance. We want the Holy Spirit to give us joy in the midst of turbulence. We ask for the Holy Spirit to come. Be released in our hearts. Be filled right now. Come, Holy Spirit. Whoa! Just breathe your life upon us. Praise you. Just receive. Just receive. Come, Holy Spirit. Whoa! Whoa! Praise you. Praise you. Just let him come and touch your heart. We just receive your presence. It's everything to us. The presence is everything to us. We just take in your breath of life. More Holy Spirit, just more. God, we don't want to be familiar. We don't want to be satisfied. We don't want to ever be just familiar with what we've received. We want more of you, God. It's the only way we're going to survive. We want more of your presence. We want more love. The fire of your presence. The fire of your love. The fire of the Holy Spirit. God, we just ask for more right now. Just fill us up right now. Just drink. Just drink. We just want more. We just want more. Another drink. We want more. If you've never, you don't even know how to enter in, just say, God, make me hungry for your presence. Make me hungry. I want to have more of your spirit. Just begin to tell him this. Begin to tell him this at, at home. Begin to tell him this. So make this your prayer. God, I want to break in more. I want to break into your presence. God, I want to feel you. I want to touch you. I want to sense you. I want to smell you. What you did this past summer wasn't enough. It was, you know what? Every day we need an infilling. 
Every day we need to meet Jesus. Every day we need to be in His Word. Every day we need to be in prayer. Every day we need an encounter. God, I ask that you would wake our hearts up. Lord, we will have no peace apart from you. We will have no joy apart from you. God, make us happy Christians, happy kids. Because we've been in your presence. Fill us up, Lord. We just say right now, make this your prayer. Make this your prayer. Make this your prayer. Say, God, make me hungry. Day in, day out, make me hungry. Increase the hunger in my heart for your presence. We just say more. Just release more. Lord, we welcome. We just say, I just, Lord, as leaders, apostolic leaders in this house, God, we say, we declare that we welcome your presence. God, do not hold back. We ask for more of your spirit to be unleashed upon us. We welcome you to move. We welcome your voice. We welcome your power. We welcome your fire. We welcome your spirit. Lord, we're not embarrassed by what would happen. But God, we welcome you to move. So Lord, I just speak a blessing over every person right now. That they would meet you, they would experience you, they would encounter your heart this week. Father, I thank you for supernatural encounters, God, with your heart this week. We ask for supernatural visitation. We ask for dreams and visions to be released upon your people. We ask for your voice to be increased in our lives. We ask God, Holy Spirit, just come and take over our hearts. Take over our minds. Take over, God. Take over. That, God, we would go to our workplace with something to give. We would go to the studios with something to give. We would go to our businesses with something to give. God, come and encounter us, Lord. The past is not enough. We want more moving forward. So we just receive it. We just receive it by faith. I, I know whoever's in this room right now, whether you're feeling it or not tangibly, you're receiving something in the atmosphere. He's moving in this place. So just say, God, I'm receiving this by faith. I receive more of you by faith. I receive your spirit by faith. I receive the more you want to release to me by faith. Just take it. We just receive it right now, God. God, we want to go to the next level. What we've experienced are that what have been so sweet, but just it's just been trickled. God, we want more, we want more, we want more. We want more of you. We want more of the Holy Spirit. We want you to break in, break in in our midst. We want you to interrupt. We want you to interrupt our daily, ordinary lives and make it supernatural. Make it extraordinary. God, we want to be spirit-filled. We want to be, Lord, just moving under the power of your presence all day long. God, we want the more. We want to be in your presence, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. For I will mark you. I will mark you. I will mark you in the new level. I will mark you in a whole new way. I will mark you with my fire. I will mark you with my presence. I will take you into a new place that you have never been. I'm going to open your eyes to see my throne room to those who are hungry, to those who are willing to lay down their lives, to those who are willing to pay the price, to those who are willing to sacrifice their time and come before me in this season. I will open your eyes to see like you've never seen. I will mark your hearts with fire. I will mark your lives with my presence. The fire of my glory will rest upon my sons and daughters like never before. And you will see that your life will be transformed in a whole new way. And people will look at you and remark, what have you, where have you been? And how are you like this? And they will desire what you have gained. I'm raising up my, my sons and daughters to be part of this end time army and you will look different than the rest. You will be marked 
You will walk with fire. The anointing of my presence will be on you. And you will release my fragrance every place you walk. So God, we say yes. We receive them. Lord, in the midst of trouble, we will release peace. In the midst of, of turbulence, we will walk with something to give to this world.